Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Alchemical Empress page. I am your host, Nicola, and I wanted to share a little bit of information with you as I'm learning. I'm continuously reading, learning, growing, and developing. And every now and then, I feel compelled to share some of the things that I have learned along the way. Recently, I was watching a young woman's video. She was basically coming into her own, her own self-discovery about uh, Hudun. She was saying, wow, these are the things that we do every day uh, uh, on, on a regular basis that we don't even know that is a part of the practice as October is a part of the Hudun, a Hudu Appreciation Month. And so I told her in the comment section, uh, continue, continue your studying, your growing, your research, your development. Uh, we have lots to learn. Um, I'm just recently coming into the knowledge of who I am as an ancient Sybil. I always knew I was a very, very old spirit. I didn't know quite how old I was in, as, a, as an ancient spirit. Uh, begin, beginning to read and research and learn more about my own self. And so she asked the question, um, I want to know more about the Sybils. Tell me more. Do you know that I tried at least three times, maybe four times to leave a comment about the Sybils and YouTube struck it down every single time? I do not know why they continue to strike down. I try to simplify it and simplify it and simplify it. And every time YouTube told me I was coming against their guidelines and struck down my comments. I thought that was interesting. So I decided I would put together this little snippet of what the Sybils, the, uh, a synopsis of the Sybils. And I'm also going to say in this particular video, as you see the picture on the screen, the most amazing research, most thorough research that I have watched uh, and, and um, read so far has come from Mama Zogby. She is a chief Hunan Amagasi. Uh, she was um, she has a lineage back to Louisiana, which is where I'm from. Man, our life stories are so similar. It's not even funny. Even the places we've walked in the earth. She's a veteran. I'm a veteran. She ended up in Georgia. I ended up in Georgia. We took pictures in some of the same spaces in Italy when we were researching ourselves. And it, it was amazing to see that I had so much in alignment with this lady's life. And I never knew of her until this year. So um, shout out to Mama Zogby and all of her research and her work. I'm so grateful for her. I want her spirit to know that your work is not in vain, that the Sybils are waking up. We're learning who we are. We're stepping into our power and we're becoming the high priestesses on this planet that we once were once again. So thank you, Mama Zagbe, for all that you've done for us, all that you've written and left as your legacy. It is not in vain. We love you and we thank you for it. If you don't have the book, go and buy it. The Sybils, the first prophetess of Mama Wata. Um, and also she has Mama Wata, Africans, Ancient Goddess, Unveiled, Volume 1 and Volume 2. She has several other books on the market. If you want to learn about who we were, uh, pick up those books and begin reading. Uh, also, um, there's a channel out there, and I can't remember the name of it because it seems like an acronym. But if I can find it, I will link it to this video. It is, uh, I think it's a 12-part um, interview session that a young lady did with Mama Zogbe before she left this planet. And she just passed away last year. Um, and so there's a, an interview hearing her voice and hearing her words uh, verbally on this YouTube channel, which I'm, I mean, you on YouTube, which I'm really grateful for. So if I can find the link, I will definitely link it to um, this video. I want to give a shout out to every Sybil that has arise, arise, arisen and woken up to the power of who they are and beginning to step into their calling. For those who've already been walking in their calling, I want to shout out to you and say thank you for your work. Thank you for your gifts, talents, and abilities. Thank you for waking us up. Thank you for the information that you're putting out to the world. Uh, thank you for just being 
the ancient spirit that you are that has had to push through so much to get back for such a time as this. What exactly is a Sybil? I'm going to read a little bit from Mama Zagbe's book, and then I'm going to have a little bit of few, a few words of my own or, or whatever she, Mama decides to channel through me. So the first prophets of Mammy, and that is the cosmic mother, the great cosmic mother, they were African women. So beware, I'm saying this, this is also written in the book, but beware of how even Google and your Google researches are trying to put a whitewashed face on the information that you find, uh, the words that you're looking up, how Europe Europeanized that uh, some of this information has um, become, even uh, even though um, you're doing the you know the best research that you can, a lot of this stuff on Google has been. Uh, Europeanized, whitewashed, and 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 they are being meticulous even on the internet searches of how the ancient mothers were portrayed. But we are African women, and every time my ancestors came back to me, they they always came back. They looked jet black. They had all white on. They were jet black. They were always walking on some red clay dirt, which made me know that was not a white woman. We couldn't be. We are the most oldest uh, humans on the planet, Black women. Before everybody, Black women were here. So the African women were the first prophets. They were called Sibyls, meaning that they were Mamiwata priestesses and priests of the Onans. The more advanced of this matriarchal divine order are, are known as Amangasis in West and they're, they're called Amangasis in West Africa today. These women can call up the dead, even the souls of the living if they wanted to. They were the, the ancient oracles used in ancient Greece, Rome, and Babylon. So a lot of times when they're saying, well, you know, the 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 Sibyls were Greek. Um, some of us were, but we were African women that branched out into these other places, not white women that were uh, <laughs> Sybils, that, that didn't happen. They, they are much, much younger uh, humans on this planet than we are. So even when you hear these words and they, and they want to affiliate your brain with whiteness, uh, let it be known that we were the first on this planet and we were the first everywhere on this planet. Uh, we were in Greece. We were in Rome. We were in ba we were in Babylon. We were in Turkey. We were everywhere on this planet. We rule this planet. So uh, black, jet black African women, okay? Black women, black, black, black. <laughs> I got to keep saying that because the, the tricks of what people have done to our minds is ridiculous. And the way that they have taken things that is originally ours and twisted it on our brains so that when you see a certain image or you hear a certain word, you see a certain image is ridiculous. So I want you to, you know, I want to keep reiterating that even when you hear uh, what we know as European, you know, uh, countries today, uh, that was African women that ventured into these places and set up shop all over the planet. Okay. So they were the ancient oracles used in ancient Greece, Rome, and Babylon. Their prophecies are the oldest in the world. It is through the divine blood of these civils, priestesses, that the patriarchal kingships of the pharaohs, the Hebrew prophets, and the Chaldean priests were born. And I also want to reiterate that these uh pharaohs only knew themselves to be deities through the bloodline of the Sibyls. Um, I won't go through the whole book, of course, today, but just to give you enough information so that you can go back and start doing your own research on it, do your own reading, and get familiar with some of the stuff that 
our ancient, I mean, our um, sister and our ancestor, Mama Zagde, has put down for us to, to pick up, right? So when you go to the Webster's Dictionary, they will define the Sybil as a female prophet or a woman uh, or a woman able to utter the oracles and prophecies of a god or a woman who can foretell the future. Conversely, under the, they say the bitter Hebrew patriarchs, the Sybils are condemned in their Bible as Behileth Ob, meaning evil serpent spirit or mistress of the python. When you start seeing some of the symbols that these women use in ancient times, now known as evil, you really get to understand how certain things got twisted and turned against us so that certain people could be propped up as gods on the planet or, um, you know, people who wanted to be leaders of the planet. The Sibyls, also were known as the, the original Holy Spirit, the Black Doves, we had the ability to channel information. So the Black Doves, the Sibyls referred to themselves as sisters of Isis, sometimes prophetess of the Black Diana. The Dove symbolized the sacred soul or the Holy Spirit. And um, that symbol was later adopted by what we know now today as Christians. Um, these Sibyls, these beautiful African women, um, they were divine authority on the planet. And um, let's see, they, they, their shard, their, our pottery shards date back to as early as 4,000 BCE, as early as 4,000 BCE, uh, where they settled in places before the great flood, in places like Ionia, Manoa, and all of the uh, temples that they created were known, these major temples were hailed as the seven wonders of the world. These sacred temples were maintained by the Sibyls and a contingent vestal, a virgin prophetess, and by a uh, contingent vestal, virgin prophetess, and eunuchs. Now, the Vatican, original sacerdotal seat of the symbols, African Black Buddhists, Umbrians, and Black Etruscan, I mean, sorry, Etruscans, etc., they erected civilization what is now known in, as in modern day Italy thousands of years before the Anglo-Romans arrived. So like I said, Black people been here long before these uh, Anglicans, uh, Ang Anglo-Saxons arrived in these spaces. And um, the what is now called the Vatican in Italy, it was the original sacerdotal seat of the ancient Black Sibyls. So they usurped Mama's seat and sat their asses on it, right? It was the first established sacerdotal African matriarch, uh, make, it, as the first established sacerdotal uh, African matriarchs, the Sibyls' cultural, cultural and religious impact was arguably the most profound on ancient civilization that modern history has ever revered, revealed or cared to admit. From Mesopotamia to Libya, Azaram or Akimit, Egypt, Iona, Manoa, Turkey, and Greece, and later Rome, the Sibyls were the primary divine Vatican and absolute moral authority. For centuries, the Greek and islands at Delos, Dodona, Delphi, and the Temple of Mami in ancient Libya were the ecclesiastical and moral hub of religious, social, and international political activity. It was under the theocracy or the theocratic governance of the Sibyls as queen mothers on this planet that African matriarchal culture reached its golden age of achievement in medicine, religion, astronomy, philosophy, law, 
architecture, music, art, and sophistication. These beautiful Black African women had their power to heal the sick and raise the dead long before Christ was ever invented. And so I wanted to put the baseline down there so that people could understand how powerful and amazing and extraordinary the Black woman is on this planet. She is the original. She is ancient. She is the first. She establishes all. She is before the Pharaoh. She creates the Pharaoh. She creates the king. She creates the male prophets, the Levites, the Chaldeans. She's the originator. She is the God. She is the God that our brothers decided that they turned their back and wanted to create a patriarchal society, society against. And so there was a price to pay for that. Yes, they flipped it patriarchal and they pushed their mothers out of their position. And there was a penalty to pay for that. And I believe that black people have paid that penalty and there's some that's gonna to continue to pay a penalty against that because karma has no color, no gender, no age. Karma is just karma. <laughs> And what goes around really does truly come around. And so people who turn their backs on the great mother um, purposely that fought against the great mother, there's a price to pay for that. Um, and those of us who didn't know we were, were doing something that was against our great mother, we're beginning to wake up from that. And we're beginning to understand who we are in this world once again. Um, and patriarchy has had its time. There will be no peace on this planet until we turn back to our mama again. There can't be any peace on this planet until we make amends to what we've done to our great mother on this planet. But the tides are turning. We're at that 6,000 year mark where you know how the, the, the earth goes through this death, burial and resurrection type deal every 6,000 years or so. And so we're at that turning point right now. And the great mother has allowed a lot of her prophetess to come online right now. We have come back for such a time as this. We're waking up. We're seeing our power and our, uh, we're connecting back with our ancient selves and our ancient ancestors. Uh, we're beginning to recognize that we have been, uh, asleep for a very long time and knowing who we are and who we were. And so things are shifting. Things are shifting, they're changing and the Sybils are back. And many of us are making a slow return back to ourselves once again. Some are running full-fledged. Everybody's in different stations and, and spaces in this whole thing right now. Um, so I'm really grateful for those of us who are searching. And that's one of the things that will happen when you know that you are called to this is It'll put a relentless search in you because you can't you can't live with the lie for too long. Like it, it, it there's something in you that has to keep looking and keep growing and keep and keep researching. So that if you if you listen to my introductory video, you understand that's the space that I got into when I started going through a transformational uh, shift around my late thirties, early forties is when I I. I was hearing certain information and it wasn't quite resonating with me in a way that I needed it to resonate with me. And so I kept looking for something. I didn't even know exactly what I was looking for. I just knew that I kept searching for something else. Um, I'm, I was shifting out of Christianity now and I was moving into learning more about ancient Kemet. But I realized that even all of our teachers were basically... They were basically basically uh, looking at the dynasties that had a patriarchal rule. And somehow, some way, most of them tended to miss the matriarchal rule in this whole thing and where this stuff really began. Because my question was, if we were so great, why did we fall? If we were so great, how did this happen? If we were so great, what caused this major rift and shift and why are we being punished and 
and uh, uh, dealt with in the way that we're de dealt with cosmically around the world. There's something more to this. And there was. Turn our back on the great divine mother. How could you how could you possibly have any peace after doing something like that? So we had to go through a certain measure of karma for what we've done to the great mama and to her prophetess, right? So I have finally closed the gap on some of the questions that I had through Mama Zagbe's work. And I'm so grateful. Like I get, again, I can't be thankful enough for the research that this woman put in. She knew that this was her destiny and she did that. And she did that and she did it so well. So I'm so grateful for her research because with all the stuff I was reading and all the teachers and scholars I was listening to, I'm still missing a piece. But the male ego is so big, they have to still put themselves first. And that's going to be dealt with. So if, 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 if the male ego doesn't find a way to humble itself before the great mother at, once again, there will no will be there will be no peace and there will be you know that karma that comes to them as much as all of the other cultures and 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 uh, spaces and places that have come against uh mama's people so um i wanted to make sure that we connected with the original and put that information out so you can continue to read continue to do your research Continue to study, continue to search back into your own ancestral line to figure out who you are, because some of us are holding royal bloodlines that we don't even know. And so we're still being usurped and 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 used, our energy is being used against us because we're ignorant and we don't know what we're dealing with within us. But many of us are, are from um, strong, strong, ancient bloodlines that need to you know, rise back up again. So if you're in that searching space in your life, and this is not for everybody, because some people are far more advanced in this information that I'm putting out and they know exactly who they are and they're running in it, you know, in their in their race. And some people like that girl that was trying to get information from me. And I kept trying to put a, something in the comment section, trying to link a book, trying to tell her who we are. I mean, everything that I put out, that it was, it was, it was uh discarded by YouTube. So I wanted to make sure I at least put this snippet out and hopefully this will be enough to cause you to go on your chase, <laughs> go on your studies, go on your research, go on your, your reading, your, everything that you need to do to start gathering that data about who you are and where you come from so that you will run in your power once again, because we're more powerful than we think. We're more powerful than we think. So the other thing I wanted to say, in addition to that, is um, as the ancients on the planet, we knew a time of peace. We knew a time of peace. We knew a time where things ran um, and flowed in a space that was in rhythm with nature and all that is a part of this planet. We knew how to deal with one another in justice and love. And I was talking to a younger member of the human race yesterday. He's a white guy who I love. I think he's an amazing person. But I was telling him about, um, you know, this shift that we're in. And he had he was having a hard time with truth. And so I backed up a little bit. But he's like, somebody's always going to be oppressed and there's always going to be war. And, and I realized that he comes from a space of war because that's in his DNA. And all he knows as the youngest species who was born in the ice from his lineage is war and oppression. So as the younger generation the only thing that he could perceive is there will always be war and oppression on this planet. Not realizing as the older generation listening to this, I know that there was a time when there was no war and oppression on the planet. And so it is our job to teach the younger ones who want to learn that we can survive all of this in war, all this war and oppression and come back to a place of peace once we come back to living in rhythm 
with our great mother and our planet and divine father. So as ancients, we have a responsibility to teach the youngers. As ancients, we have a responsibility to teach the planet how to come back to order once again. We have a job to do on this planet. We didn't just come here for this 6,000 year revolution, revelation, revolution, revelation, both to just sit here. We have a job to do. And our job is to wait, awaken, to heal, to teach, to do whatever it is that we're assigned to do. And everything is not love and light. We want things to be love and light, but this turning point is gonna require hard truth sometime things that people don't want to hear, people, uh, you know, being stern about certain things, being, you know, a little bit more forceful about other things. Like people want to live in this, oh, I'm I'm a light worker. It's all love and, love and light. It is not all love and life. Some people have to give the hard truth and sometimes it doesn't feel so good. But it's like um, a, a loving, gentle parent that has to have a stern disciplinary action against their child to get them to walk in the right way. Some of us are going to have to be that in this in this planet right now while we're going through this turning point. So don't uh, despise the the moments where things in the shift has to be a little bit less than love and light and a little bit more stern and hard truths in order for us to get back to our rightful selves once again. Um, we have to teach the younger generation. We have to help them, those who want to be helped and those who have souls. There's some people that's walking around here that have no souls and anybody that's fighting against humanity as a whole, they're probably going to be, you know, dealt with in a, in a very harsh way. Um, I'm not, I say probably, but I pretty much know those who are fighting against humanity right now are probably not going to make it. They look like they're winning. They look like they're using their AI and they're winning against humanity, but that is not going to stand forever. The shift will occur. Mama has allowed this madness for long enough. The great cosmic mother is in complete and total uh, control. She's in, she's in charge and she is uh, allowing certain things for a certain reason because it's all in the plan. I don't even know the plan, but I just know it's in the plan and that shift is occurring. And so the awakening is happening on a large scale and things will be turned right side up once again, because we know everything is shifted upside down. So everything is going to show, uh, everything is going through this shift right now. And as we're going through this shift, I just wanted to do the little part that I could play to let you know who the originals are on this planet and that the originals are awake. We are back and we have work to do. So I hope that helps somebody to go on their journey of research and study. And um, I hope some of the men that's listening to this will get out of their ego and stop, you know, beating your chest about the patriarchal dynasties and start looking about who is your mama? Who is your mama? <laughs> and you better get back to the great mama and you better give her a just due respect or you will be dealt with accordingly as well. So that's a stern warning to you. I love you, everybody. Take care. Be blessed.